my dad. He had a heart attack. He was in hospital. She thought they could fix it, but Daddy, he died. They just said that there's nothing they can do. And I think it was that moment that your world explodes, your world just shatters. It's complete and utter disbelief um, that it's happened to you, or to us as a family. You can't believe she's not here. Even, even now, sort of nine months on, you think, it's surreal. You know, I feel like I'm talking about someone else, and you, you feel like she'll be coming down those stairs any minute. Dave screamed for me and ran upstairs and Max was, he'd gone, he'd gone he'd, in his sleep. For the first year, without doubt, I was just getting on the tube and putting my coat up and crying. <laughs> I mean, it was very difficult. The worst thing a parent can do is tell their children that yeah, their daddy or their mummy isn't coming home. If I had one wish, any wish, it would be to bring him back to life. I mean, I can't think of anything else. We were alone. We were totally alone. The first day that I was approached by grief encounter, I was totally broken. And they were so friendly, and it wasn't a scary place, and it felt safe. To find out that there's other people that... It's a bit more comforting. Yes, it is comforting, you're right, yeah. It felt like I found someone. And since then, grief encounter has been like our second family. When my dad died, there really wasn't anybody there for us as a family. And we were left with this new world. At that time, I was traumatized. I was orphaned by the time I was nine. Somehow or other, I've managed to turn bad into good. And that's how I would inspire children that are going through this. And that's why a grief encounter was set up to make things different for today's bereaved child. We provide one-to-one -one counselling, group work, workshops, family therapy. We go into schools, we have residential camps, we have e-counselling. I think we're unique in what we do. I think we're different because we help the families, we support them, we go on their journeys with them, we almost sometimes live it with them. My first introduction to Grief Encounter was the zoo trip. They took us out in fun days for the kids. It was like a blessing because we were feeling terribly bad. Grief Encounter were amazing. They went straight into the school. Um, they organised a balloon release and an assembly for, you know, for, for Max. We went on a, a sort of workshop at headquarters, which was amazing. Grief Encounter run workshops on Mother's Day, on Father's Day and Remembrance Day to bring bereaved families together. So I think the activity for today is drawing a memory. We made a big wall with all of our thoughts yeah. on and then and somebody read a story and then we just done loads of things on that story. These two labels are very special because they're for my mummy. I felt happy because we weren't the only one that has lost our dad and been unlucky. But just to be with people that were in the same situation as you. And I think that gave me the courage to then go to the groups or to accept more help then. 
I cannot begin to tell you the stories that we hear on a day-to-day -day basis. They feel different, they feel troubled, they feel worried, they think they're alone. I was in a difficult situation. We know that bereaved children later on in life with no intervention will suffer from mental health issues. As a bereaved child, you can't have conversations about the future because you expect everyone's going to die. Unless you work with that, you can't trust, you can't depend, and you live in fear. It kind of scared me if something else would happen. It worried me. It helps me open up. We have children coming to us saying things like, my daddy's died. And what we won't do is shut down that conversation. And we want to hear their stories. Our therapy support is by qualified, trained, registered therapists. And I think that's a real value that other charities just don't have. The government don't want to accept that bereaved children are a vulnerable group. We receive no government funding whatsoever and yet we remain an open and free access service. The phone is ringing the whole time. We, we need more therapists the whole time. Our programs are full up. Our fun days are taking 60 children out at a time. Our workshops are full up. We need money now so we can grow and we can help as many families as we can. No one knows what griefing is until you come face to face with it. And no one knows how important it is this help that you get from these people that are specialized in helping people who are lost, who have lost someone. I don't know where I would have been today. I really don't know. The memories we're now making going forward in our so-called new life have just been incredible and I, I can't begin to sort of adequate it in words how amazing it's been you know it's been a lifeline every family has a different story and journey and we can be with them on their personal journeys it's a wonderful thing that we're able to do and at the end of a day at the end of a very difficult day sometimes to know that we've been able to help to make a difference in these families lives it's, it's a great feeling. A good day at work is when I see one of those little kids smile. We can change a child's life. We can change a child's life, that's what I would say.